So this is the very last section in chapter six. We're gonna talk about bacterial growth. One thing that I want you to definitely make sure you remember is that when we mention bacterial growth, we are not talking about size. If you write size down on a test, you will get the answer wrong. Bacterial growth is an increase in the number of cells. Okay. Uh, this could also be phrase amount of cells. Your book likes the term population. Okay. And that's completely fine. Um, the population of cells increasing, the amount of cells, the number of cells all mean the same thing. Uh, <clears throat> we're not considering bacterial growth, the cells themselves actually getting larger, just having larger amounts of cells. Now, bacterial growth is dependent upon the bacterial cell division process of binary fission. This is the simplest version of cell division. What we start with is a young cell. You can see it here. Uh, if you remember, no matter what type of cell division you were doing, step one is always going to be replicating the DNA. So the chromosome is doubled. And actually, in order to separate the pieces of DNA from one another to move these chromosomes apart, what we see happening is that within the cell, okay, uh, the chromosomes actually attach themselves. Let me change the color on this really quickly. Okay. The chromosomes actually attach themselves to the cell membrane, and then as the cell itself gets larger, okay, the membrane expands and the chromosomes are moved apart. Okay. So they're moved apart by membrane growth. Okay. So once these are separated from one another, a protein band actually forms in the center. Now the protein band will progressively get smaller and smaller and begin to pinch in okay, the sides of the cell membrane and the cell wall will actually form around it and begin to follow. Uh, eventually you see these divots here, we consider the septum formation. And eventually the septum is complete and the cells dissociate from one another. They split apart. Now, this is true for organisms that have an individual arrangement or what we consider no arrangement. If the cells do not completely detach from one another, that is how we get arrangements like streptococcus or staphylococcus or tetrads or streptobacilli. So this is simple cell division, binary fission. There's actually another video of this uh, on the D2L page if you would like to look at it. Okay. Now, <clears throat> because cell division happens with one cell dividing into two, the generation time or doubling time that we measure for cells is the amount of time it takes for a complete fission cycle to occur. In other words, the amount of time it takes to go from one cell to two daughter cells. Okay. So each generation has the population increasing by a factor of two. We go from one to two, two to four, four to eight, eight to 16, 16 to 32, 32 to 64, and so on and so on and so on. Okay. Now, as long as the environment is favorable, the doubling time can continue at a pretty consistent rate. That's as long as the environment is favorable. Okay. Now you have to remember that the more cells that are there, the more waste products they will create, the more oxygen they will consume, the more nutrients they will consume. So doubling continues as long as the nutritional value of the environment stays relatively consistent. Now, again, one thing I want to mention is that generation times and doubling times vary depending upon the organism. Some of them have a rapid generation time, close to 15 or 20 minutes. Some of them multiply extremely slowly and it'll take 18 hours to double. Okay. It totally depends upon the cell. Uh, this is something that again is genetic. It's found in their DNA. You have the genetics to double quickly or you do not. So one important element of this is what we consider the bacterial growth curve. Okay. Now, one thing to mention here and to take note of is that this is batch culturing in a closed system. 
we mean this is what happens in a test tube. It is obviously not necessarily the case out in the environment. Okay? The issue with culturing the organisms in the test tube is that nutrients are finite. So is space. Okay? There is also going to be no mechanism for removing waste products. So any waste that is created stays within the test tube. Okay? So we see four okay, phases in this bacterial growth curve. Okay? The lag phase, this is a preparatory phase. Uh, at this point in time, think in terms of at time zero. These are new cells. You just took a loop and put them into the test tube. They're not going to start growing yet. This is a phase of acclimation. Okay? They're getting acclimated to the environment. Okay? sort of testing the waters. Now eventually, once the cells are acclimated, they will begin to grow exponentially. That doubling time will kick in and they will start reproducing and reproducing at a relatively rapid rate. Okay? Here we'll see an exponential growth phase. Uh, oftentimes we also call this a log phase. It can be counted as a logarithmic growth phase. It's a little bit easier to think about it that way. We say lag to log. Okay. Uh, so, as we were saying, this is often considered the log phase because you could also consider it logarithmic growth. Here we see organisms utilizing those nutrients, multiplying, multiplying, multiplying. Now, eventually we're going to reach what we consider the stationary phase. And in the stationary phase, the number of new cells is actually equal to the number of cells dying. In other words, there's no population increase. Okay. Why would this happen? Why would our cells suddenly begin, you know, not developing as quickly, not reproducing as quickly, or we have larger numbers of cells begin to die off? It's because this is a closed tube. Okay. Again, number of nutrients are finite. There's only so much oxygen in the tube. Uh, there's only so many nutrients in the tube and there's no way to get rid of any waste products. The waste products will eventually start to slowly poison the organisms. Now the stationary phase is maintained for a brief period of time and then eventually there are pretty much no nutrients left within the tube. Uh, there are massive amounts of waste products and we see organisms start to enter into the death or what is sometimes known as the decline phase, death or decline phase, where the number of cells being produced is much smaller than the number of cells dying off, and we see the total population begin to decrease as time continues. Now, <clears throat> how do we do things like analyze population sizes? Well, one of them you're pretty familiar with, uh, turbidity. Uh, is another word for the cloudiness of your medium. Okay. When the media we're using actually starts to become cloudy, we know that there are bacteria there. Uh, an obvious extension of this is that the cloudier the media is, the more bacteria there are in the tube. Okay. Uh, so the greater the turbidity, the larger the population size. We can actually measure the turbidity with something we call turbidometry, okay. uh, where it's uh, basically like putting the liquids into a tube and having the tube measure how much light we can actually get through the cloudy liquid. Uh, obviously, the more light you can get through, the lower the population. The less light that goes through, the higher the population. Okay? Uh, you can do counting of the cells. You can do a direct cell count where you put a specific amount of your culture onto a slide and then count the number of bacteria you have in that specific amount and multiply out to the total amount of media you have. Uh, you can use a Coulter counter or a flow cytometer. Uh, both work quite similarly, uh, where you put your sample liquid in through a very small tube. It's about the size of a capillary tube. Uh, and as the bacteria flow through the tube, usually they'll get through relatively single file. Uh, there will be a counting mechanism. Usually it's breaking some type of beam of light. When the bacteria pass through, they break the beam and it counts the number of bacteria. 
Okay. Uh, the major difference between the culture counter and the flow cytometer is that the flow cytometer can tell the difference between living cells and dead cells, while the culture counter pretty much counts anything that's considered a cell. There's no distinction between what's viable and will survive and what is uh, dead or dying.